let's meet someone who lives on the front line of the climate crisis. Hi, my name is Kausa Rassani. I'm from Togo. And today I would like to show you how the climate change is affecting my country. As you can see, this is our main road and due to coastal erosion, we can no longer use it. The countries that have historically emitted the least carbon, which have done the least to contribute to the climate crisis, are the same countries that are suffering the worst damage of the climate crisis. Countries in the global north have contributed a lot more to the climate crisis than countries from the global south has. That's not fair. In West Africa, in the north, the desert is expanding and eating up farms. And in the south, the seas are rising and gobbling up fishing villages. That is why we need climate justice now. And that's why this week's episode of FM4 Klima News Weekly is all about climate justice. FM4 Klima News. It seems as if we don't have a future. I know for climate justice. When I go to UN climate summits, the COPs, I meet people from all over the world. And so many of them want us to all talk about that issue, climate justice. So this on top of my head, is temp temperature rise, 1.5 degrees Celsius, and I am the Earth. It makes me sick. What I need is climate justice. In essence, climate justice is about fairness, common decency, that concept we try to drum into kindergarten children. Well, actually, it's kind of awkward me, a guy from England, home of the Industrial Revolution, explaining what climate justice means. So I've got some help from Kumi Naidu. He is the former director of Greenpeace International and Amnesty International. He's from South Africa, and now he fronts an organization called Africans Rising. He explains climate justice by explaining its opposite, climate injustice. The fact that people who are paying the first and most brutal price from the impacts of climate change are the ones who have contributed least to the problem is an expression of climate injustice. Climate justice, therefore, involves understanding that the problem is rooted in our economic systems, our energy systems, and so on, all of which contribute to the continued suffering of those least responsible for the impacts of climate change. Let's meet someone from Austria who's been studying this issue. Hello, my name is Isabella Sukic. Uh, I work at Südwind in Austria in the area of climate justice. Isabella can relate to what Kaya Sara has been telling us in this episode because she's been studying the impacts of coastal erosion in West Africa. In Senegal, for example, the country we're doing research with the University of Bologna, uh, coastal erosion uh, means that before like we talked to people for example and they they told us uh, before there were like big palm trees all around the coast and they're not there anymore so there's this coastal erosion but also sea level rise um, so the country the cities that are on the coast like Lu San Luis or Dakar in Senegal they are sinking in and they're saying quote I'm seeing my house sinking in the into the sea this erosion is causing huge problems and it's very expensive to protect coastal communities from erosion. You need dikes, you need sea walls, you need to replant mangroves, you need to reintroduce sand dunes. All of this costs money, millions of dollars. And when the people haven't got that money, they try and improvise in any way they can, explains Kayasara. When I come here, you can see that now people are using alternative solutions. They are putting sand in these kind of bags um, to try to face the advance of the sea. So before it was not like that, the sea was not so close to us. Now these communities should be getting money. Over 12 years ago at the climate summit in Copenhagen, the rich world promised to give the poorer world $100 billion every year by the year 2020 to help them fight the ravages of climate change and adapt to the future. But that money hasn't been coming. They're not seeing the money because it's not paid by the global north. And uh, these countries, the industry, states, countries should take the responsibility and pay what they have also promised to pay. So promises are not kept and haven't been kept in the last years. Actually, 
in Europe, what we're doing is adding salt to the wounds. Whilst the fishermen of West Africa suffer from these rising sea levels, they have another problem. Massive ships come from Europe and scoop up all the fish from a local area, the fish that they've relied on for their livelihoods. So that's just not fair. Actually, talking of climate summits, Kayasara is one of the many African activists who felt she was shut out of the debate at the recent UN climate summit in Glasgow. It was really expensive for many activists to go there, and there were many travel restrictions, so many couldn't be there in person. And Kayasara says she felt left out of the debate, that she is determined that the people in the rich world listen to what she has to say. If you don't stop your addiction to fossil fuels on rich countries, if you don't try to find real solution like decreasing the emission, we won't have solutions. So please listen to us. We are feeling the heat in Africa. We are seeing how the temperature is increasing. And we are seeing this. Before it's not like that, the sea was not so close. Please, if you can do something, if you can raise your voice, do it for us and save me. Save all these millions of people who are losing their jobs because fishermen can no more rely on the activities. Every time I return from UN climate summits with the concept of climate justice ringing in my ear, I almost expect it to be part of the political debate here in Austria and in Europe. But it isn't. It really isn't. So what should Austrian and European politicians be doing about this issue? I think they should think about the term justice and climate justice instead of just focusing on environmental uh, aspects of the climate crisis. They should also be focusing on social aspects of the climate crisis. How are people um, affected by the climate crisis? Kumi Naidu of Africans Rising says what we need is systematic change. We must redesign our systems to eliminate these patterns of inequality and injustice. I will leave the last words of this episode of FM4 Klima News Weekly to the star of this episode, the young activist from Togo, Kaya Sara Sani. So please help us and use your privilege and your voice to push pressure on your politicians and your leaders to take the real decision, the right decision to save us and the planet. Thank you.